Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Zooming Who's Podcast, and I'm your host, Dustin Husky. I'm Kurt Ansarpus. And I'm guest, Wuff. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, we, we have another smorgasbord here. Now we have two TV tables. I think by episode 100, I'm just gonna have I'm I'm just gonna open up a buffet restaurant. What if you end up doing like this at one of your bonfires? Oh yeah, like a group podcast with everybody there. Yeah, we kind of did do that at that your w- birthday party. Yeah, yeah. That was that was fun. I, I think that'd be hell insane, but I don't know how many people would actually would want to listen in. There'd have to be some uh, some, some sort of org- organization. <laughs> Honestly, to to be honest. I would not mind taking this podcast to a con. A moderator of some sort. That would be the only way that this would see other people besides just guests. Would be to go to another convention and just... This is empty. Hmm? This is uh, empty. Uh, empty. Empty cans can just lay around here, but... But I, I don't want to grab either yours or mine by the I wrong one. I the crescent by... paw. So there we go. But anyway... Um, yeah, bonfire meets, there's already way too much going on involving those that doing a podcast and r- running a meet at the same time would be way too much work. And before someone comes to me and says, oh, I can help you run. No, no, there's, there's, it's either I'm running a podcast or I'm running a meet. I don't know if I can do both, but I would probably rather do those separately. Yes. Oh, Why do you have a block of cheese? Because cheese Cat is... likes to snack. I know, but a block of cheese? Yeah. Not even like the pre-sliced stuff? No, that's that's too expensive. I'm cheap cat. Really? Yeah. Where yeah. do you go to get groceries? My store. Oh, the um, Uber Corporation that we are not supposed to speak of? Walmart? Wally World? Wally World. Well, I work for Amazon, so... Yeah. I work for a broke evil company, so... Fun fact, work sucks, but it's necessary. Yep. It's a necessary suck. It is a necessary evil. I actually like my job, though. I don't like my company so much, but I like my job. Like, it keeps me physically active. Keeps me off the street. They give you uh, health benefits at all? Yeah. That's always nice. Speaking of, I had a thing happen at work today. Okay, let's talk about that. Minor concussion. Uh, um, context? I don't know. I don't even know if it'd be considered a minor. Well, how, I didn't have a knot on my head. How did you get a concussion? I would say you just had a concussion that was bad. I had a concussion. Um, so we have these steel racks that we keep all of our pallets up in and all of our freight and everything else that comes in. You were in the back of well, the Walmart, correct? No. Yes and no. So I'm in produce. We have our own back room. So we have our own steel up there. And um, as we work produce out, we've got these collapsible crates that they come in. You just like squeeze. Plastic cr- crates? Yeah, they're plastic collapsible. Like you squeeze like two ends and then the two flaps fall in. Oh, you got that. fancier pallets than we do. Yeah. Is it more like a cage more than a crate? No, it's like a... It's a oh, and those... Oh, it's oh, like okay. this deep and like this long. Oh, and you can carry them around. Oh, okay. You can carry it around like, like all my cucumbers. We call them green Hulk dicks. <laughs> uh, go in the, the crate. It collapses into itself. And then over the course of the day, they get stacked up on an empty pallet underneath the steel. Once it gets too full... I shrink wrap the all the crates on the pallet and then take it outside and we bring a new empty pallet in. So I was stacking all these empty crates and I just started a new stack and I always try so hard to get it not perfect but nice and organized. Right. So then I like shift it all over the place because when you wrap it and they're not locked, they kind of lock into each other, it just, it just doesn't travel well. Hey, Wolf, can you grab me another cherry? Yeah. Grab another cherry. Do that. I may as well do the unthinkable. Mixing 
cherry coke with UV blue. Oh, God. It's not so much the mixing of the liquor and the soft drink. It's the idea that I am going to do something I've not done in six years. Oh, the... Almost, actually, exactly six years to the day. Oh, yeah, that's right. By the way, guys, if there wasn't a coof going on right now, we would have all probably been at MFF for the weekend. Yes. Which kind of sucks, because, uh... We haven't really been to a convention since February, almost yeah. a year. Can you believe that? Almost a year. We've only, we've we've been well, ex with the exception of oh. Taiwan, because Taiwan actually got their shit together. They actually had a convention like either last weekend or two weekends ago, and people are like, "Damn, why can't we do that?" And simply be put, because when this whole thing started, Taiwan like, Taiwan already shut everything down. That's a lot. <laughs> so, as Can I, I was have saying, an unpopular opinion? Actually, it's going to be very, very popular or unpopular. I don't know. So a hot take. Taiwan is best China. It is best China. So as I was saying... I do like Chinese people, but your government is kind of... Congratulations, you have now got your podcast banned because you were anti-communist China. Yeah. So as I was saying... <laughs> uh, I was stacking a, a, an empty pallet or an empty stack of these crates and the steel that I'm under is just short of six feet it's like five foot seven when it's up on a pallet it's even shorter and I came up full force Ooh, right no. up into the steel which is bolted to the ground so it doesn't budge you weren't operating a ma like a machine at all when you were doing this were you? no 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 do you, does your uh, workplace have like a set rule for how high you can stack things on the yes. pallet? Oh god, yeah. Do they do they use like some kind of like I don't know reference point on like the columns in your workplace? Because where I work, yeah, we have like uh, we have a baler and we have like a passageway through, and like all the rest of the steel is dropped down to the floor. If you can't pass through, it's too high. Huh. I think it's like 10 or 12 pallets high. We can't go above 12. So I yeah. gotta do something. So I knocked my my kitty, my okay. kitty noggin. It was painful. I'm Instant sending that headache. To, you're sending that to who? I'm sending that to Klaus because he was the one that I was drinking with <laughs> six years ago. So instant headache. And and you wrapped your head hard, you like instantly. I felt the headache come on. Ooh. I've never had that. I was not before. gonna fix that. Well, if it's a work-related injury, I did report it. Okay, good. I mean, it's 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 a you. Well, the way how I understand it, you have a concussion to the degree that they sent you home early. Well, half an hour early. My shift was almost over anyway. But it was. Again, I, I guess this is Walmart. They say, well, half, 80% of all of our shifts don't show up anyway. So let's just let us just let them go for, for 30 minutes. And get this. They, they made me fill out a paper form because they couldn't find me in their smart system. You, you can't do that digitally? What? I'm in their system for clocking in digitally. I can digitally check out equipment. I can digitally check my, like, everything on their wire. But I can't, they couldn't find me in their smart system. That's weird. You are not a part of their system, man. That's right. No. You're an adult. You can't buy me a <laughs> hot dog, man. I threw it on the, the ground. ground. <laughs> It'll almost be that time again, too. Christmas special on SNL. Yep. <laughs> my, my favorite ongoing tradition, like, especially with the holidays in the States, it's always waiting for the Thanksgiving special and the Christmas special. Because, uh, do you, you ever saw the, uh, recent, or more recent skit that was added to the Thanksgiving special? The one where they're all talking, like, politics at the table, and the only way to stop them from arguing is, like, a little girl playing an Adele song, and they all oh. just, like, break out in song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My favorite one. 
And you know who I'm voting for? I'm voting for Insert Orange. Oh, you're such a... Hello from me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. So, um, what's everybody been up to this, uh, since Thanksgiving? I haven't really done a whole lot much besides helping my brother look for a car and, uh, trying to get going on my film photography project, which December, the, the month of December is going to be the month of when I get this thing started and hopefully maybe either started filming-wise or finishing but I don't know about finishing it all in the month of December because I have 10 episodes of all things analog film related stuff for photography maybe I have to borrow a camera from another fur unless I buy what, one what kind of camera are you thinking of like it's a 110 millimeter this is Minolta a... I think it's Minolta no Pentax it's a Pentax uh, 110 SLR camera, which I don't have, but I really, really want. And I can buy brand new ones for like 100 bucks. In the box with multiple lenses. Is this online? Yeah. That's Amazon? Cool. eBay. Really? Well, it's an older film camera. Ah, However, okay. they have been remanufacturing 110 film again. Oddly enough, they won't do 126, which... 126 and 110 film uses the same width uh, film cartridge, and it's an actual plastic cartridge with two uh, wheels on it. <laughs> However, 126 is much more taller, whereas 110 is half the height. So why they why they didn't go produce 126 millimeter as well? I don't know, but. Um, I'm going to be buying some expired film pretty soon to do some examples of and take pictures with, so who knows. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my project, my interest right now to, since pretty much the, the whole idea of I can't do cons, so I can't do panels, but I also want to do a comprehensive panel quality-esque series of now that's a fancy way of mixing. Look at you. You you are infusing the vodka and the cherry cola. The thing is, I don't know if this will actually work. I have no idea. I I barely mix it as as well, and uh, it's not bad. Unofficially no. sponsored by UB Blue. UB I wish. UB Blue, Coca Cola, Cherry, and yours truly, Miller High Life. What? Too bad I didn't have any boom boo. What? You know What's that boom boo? Th that rum that you actually said went down smooth. At, oh, that was good. Oh, that was some smooth rum. And I've never had a rum that was that smooth. Yeah, they, like, but the only problem with it is its price tag. I what can't just... Like $40 a bottle? No, it's like roughly 30 bucks for a, a tiny bottle with a cork in it. Which is nice, but when you're trying to share it amongst three people, you might as well just buy three separate ones for people. Yeah. It's really good rum, though. That was incredibly smooth. Oh, you don't almost drink that by itself. It was smooth like glass. Like, oh my goodness. And I normally hate rum. Um, I normally hate vodka. Now, I don't mind UV Blue, because the last time I drank it was six years ago at MFF, and that was during GasCon. Gas and Con. here, here... Me and my reenactor furry friend named Klaus, who's out of Michigan, he and it, he and I were, were talking about the North Africa campaign, <laughs> and we were literally getting absolutely blitzed out of our minds while talking about Rommel, the Kessel Ring, and Montgomery. Kessel Ring? Don't you mean the Kasserine Pass? Kessel Ring. Or something like that. Kessel oh, Ring's no. from Star Wars. Oh. Well, then let's actually mix the two together, then. <laughs> the Kessel Ring. The Millennium Falcon made that run in 12 point... I forget exactly the reference. Hang on. Kessel. In, in 14 parsecs, 12. It was 12. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Actually, I don't mind hard liquor. It's just I have to mix it these days because... 
back in the day. I used to drink it straight. I don't understand how anybody can drink that straight. Normally out of the bottle, but now I realize you're better off just pouring it into a cup and then drinking it straight. And then now I'm starting to get more taste. Yeah. I would rather actually drink it with something to mix it with. Because you know what? Water. <clears throat> water down with... Yeah. Oh, at least chase it with water. I mean, what? That's why I always have a glass. Soda food. is kind of water-ish, but with syrups and other additives to it, so... You drink all that water already? Yeah. What the he's, heck, he's thirsty. He's also... equal. He, he is maintaining I, equilibrium right now. See, I made myself, like, a trucker mug of ice water, but I forgot to bring it. Because I'm trying to get back on the wagon, per se. What what wagon is, the is that? The exercise wagon. And what I've been told, at least, is that ice water helps you burn off fat more. True. Oh, I guess it makes sense. So, and on top of that, you know, when you're, say, biking three miles worth or whatever set like standard you have yourself set at, um, it also keeps you hydrated. I can smell that stuff from over here. Is it bad? No, it smells good. I know, it's like, my favorite, I found out recently, it's, like it's raspberry flavored, oh. but I found out that my former babysitter loves this stuff. Oh. And she said this used to be like their college party drink, which I'm having a kind Vietnam of... flashback. Oh no, I'm gonna bring the we're going to talk about the Deutsche Africa Corps! Oh. <laughs> but, um, oh! Next week, um, the Pearl Harbor episode's coming out for that World War II week by week uh, series. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm next weekend or next week? I believe it's next week. Because they, they you just. You know released... what Monday is? No. December 7th. Oh, yeah. Man, I can't believe. This, this month, or last month, had gone by like real fast. And now, I feel like we're on the final, final level of 2020. 2020, and now we gotta... I'm just terrified of what 2021's gonna bring. I'm optimistic. We're already in flu season. Yeah. And plus two, there was a... They were hoping that Thanksgiving um, weekend, there'd be less people traveling. Yeah. <laughs> While no. that's sort of the case, still, less people took to planes... But people still took the planes, even on a surprising level during the pandemic. Plus, there were more people driving this past Thanksgiving than there was years past. It's probably because um, too, too many people are scared about going on a plane, on a plane which knowing. is understandable. Yeah. Because planes aren't really all that clean to begin with. They use recycled air, I found out. So all that air that you're exhaling is being redistributed or somehow filtrated. I don't know exactly how it works. There's water. I mean, that actually makes more sense because if you have a way for air to enter the cabin, you can't pressurize. Exactly. Which, at 30,000 feet above sea level, you really need to pressurize your, your cabin. Thanks. Or not, you have all of your little uh, oxygen mask thing in the jigs. Oh! I don't want to wear an oxygen... Oh. And then just, just pass out. You don't need to... Government can't tell me to wear no... Ma uh, uh. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about... I showed you the video of Spaceman. Did I think Spaceman? I, yeah, the guy that wore that... Tubing thing that... Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you showed came me into a picture my store. I think I showed and you then, the video. Oh, yeah. He was like flipping me on. <laughs> That's right. He never come back. You know, there was this... You we're scared him away. Well, it, or that, or he man. bought, like, six months of supplies. You And you didn't even know it. And he's like, see you, bitches. <laughs> and just, like, start huddling in a, a giant Nike yeah. missile silo somewhere in New Berlin. A literal rocket man. I'm yeah. I'm down in this bunker the rest of my life. Which, actually, they apparently did convert those missile silo launcher tubes into underground apartments. I... I kind of believe it. Because there's actually not... There is one not far from here. I don't exactly know specifically where, 
But there is one three miles away up the road. How cool. I would live in one. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably want to see what it's like to live in an underground housing building. And, and it's all circular because the they're sun. literally using the tube of the silo. I mean, just... I already don't see the sun when True. I wake up for work. Same. I'm in the basement, so I barely see much sun. I would normally do more things in a year, but since pandemic really kicked things like killed things off more than it kicked things off. Mm. I've been pretty sedimentary, set sedentary sediment. I have no idea. I, secluded. Sec, secluded is a better word that I can pronounce now. Normally, I do more things and see the sun and whatnot. Do things outside. I like that, but with like pandemic, it's encouraged me to stay indoors anyway. It's nice to have people over. Yeah, but I don't do much outside of home because uh, I don't need to. I found out that the place that we go typically for our airsoft meets, or mm -hmm. not airsoft, uh, laser tag, mm -hmm. same difference, only one involves BBs. Um, they're still open right now. Of course they are. Which I kind of found shocking because I'm like thinking... Everything's open. Yeah, now. no, I don't think I'd want to go laser tagging right now in the midst of a pandemic, especially with kids walking around and you know kids don't aren't really the um what's the what's the word for it the sec. no the prime example of what to do oh, yeah. during a pandemic because most kids don't like to wash their hands yeah. Yeah. and now they're touching all the blasters that everybody uses yep. and that is how diseases are spread yep you have to wonder if they're working at a reduced capacity and by appointment only yeah i think maybe it's like, hey, uh, we can accommodate you and like 15 other people at one point. Which actually for an arena would be really cool because that, that arena is multi-level. Or it's really bi-level and pretty big. So you can have 15 people spread out. Oh my god. This is like eastern front levels of stuff where you mm -hmm. can start sniping people from halfway. Oh my god. What if you end up like getting somebody... And, and everything you say is like, maintain social distancing, <laughs> pew pew. You're not six feet, pew pew pew. You know, <laughs> you know what I'd probably put on? If if I wanted to be funny and also be serious at, at, at the same time, and if I had about, well, I don't Gas know. Mask. What? Gas mask? I own oh, two no. of those. If I had the money, oh, my goodness, if I had 80 acres, I would do so much with it. But anyway, if I had a laser arena, I'd put little plastic or plastic foam bayonets on the, like, maintain distancing, and then start stabbing people. It's like, you score, you score, you score, bloodlust. And just like, ah! But then you still maintain your six feet because no one wants to get poked by a foam sword. Oh, no. Hell. Definitely not. Unless you're furry and you like silicon swords. <laughs> and then you're being poked in other places than, than your chest. Oh, Unless it gets to your chest. Then that's... you have a medical problem. Or you have discovered the furry way. That's another sad thing. We can't buy our silicone sculptures anymore at MFF this year. Yes. Honestly, that was like probably one of the best times to actually get anything from them because and get it almost immediately. Yeah, they had instead it. of waiting four to five months like I did for my last one. We're talking about bad dragon. dicks. We're talking about silicon dildos, literally throwing your hard-earned money into your ass, but it feels great. And honestly, it's no better way to shove money up your ass than, well, I remember. Silicon dicks up your ass. I remember a local, um, he went with his mom to this convention for the weekend, and his mom, actually, she wanted to go and check some of the dealer's dens, but yeah. what she didn't realize was that she went to the adult section first, and not the typical ones that you would go buying art badges or whatever. She Merchandise, found the, yeah. She found the sculptures first before she found the art, which we had to laugh at because that was kind of funny. I made my... Supervisor. Dude, I yeah. first thought that was actually a scrotum. Wait, what? And you know that actually looks like butt cheeks. Mm -hmm. That also looks like a scrotum, but it more looks like butt cheeks. That you have a medical problem. You should show Wolf. I kind of want to see this now. 
Oh my god. <laughs> oh. I don't want to fuck this potato in the ass. Those are all sweet potatoes. Oh my god. My, my boss found the. Looks like a dog dick <laughs> shaft. A dog and rocket? I, and then she found the butt, and I was like. And then I found the other one, and I was like, hey, this kind of looks like. And I just set it down on the table, just like that. She died. She was laughing for probably two minutes. She knows. Wait, and this is and this is the one that you think is furry. No, this is just my regular supervisor. Oh boy. She's a little bit messed up. Oh, Sabine. She's the one I sprayed with the hose yes yesterday. And that she asked to get sprayed, and you were like, "Will do." She dared me. He's the kind of boss that, like, if you don't do it, she calls you a wuss. Dude, if I had that, that kind of power over my boss to say, spray me, I dare you, and you know what? I'd get a fire hose. I want to make sure I sandblast his face. Because <laughs> I want to get the opportunity to get back at him in any way possible. When she sat there afterwards, she's like, you got balls. I'm like, yeah. Wow. Like like those potatoes. It's like those sweet potatoes. I got balls. I got balls. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> I've got... It's like the ACDC song. He's got big balls. She's got big balls. Some balls there's... are held for charity. Well, there's held for fancy dress. <laughs> <laughs> I, think... I swear this is... I swear, why aren't furries playing the song at cons? Because it's too old and people don't know what good music is they, these days. They want to listen to uh, dis destructive wub wub. Actually, I like the wubs. Wubs aren't bad, but I do like the more classic dance. The wub. Mu wub. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> dubstep. Yeah. Oh, like the stuff that they play at the raves and stuff. I, miss... I enjoy some wubs, but after a while, it's like, come on. I really need everything. Bring every time, though. I go to these conventions, I keep forgetting to bring earplugs, because they play that shit real loud. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they can. And it's not that I don't mind, you know, getting into it, but, you know, if I want to get some of those cooler shots up front, I can't be there for too long because of how loud those damn speakers are. Yep. I actually, you know, since we're on the top topic of raves, I've noticed that a lot of people are on Twitter right now are recollecting previous MFFs. Yep. Um, so I have. So, I recall, it wasn't really a bad event, but it was kind of one that made me a tad bit upset with the staff at the time. MFF 2018. First MFF that I'm there for the full weekend rather than just a day. I just got my DSLR set up, and I was bringing my camera bag with me. And one of their staff members, I can't remember if it was Dorsai or if it was the actual con staff... Stop me and said, you can't bring your bag inside. I was like, uh, where am oh, I going to... Oh, yeah. I was like, uh, okay, uh, where where do I put it? He's just like, just leave it out here. It's like, uh... Wait, outside, outside. Yeah, they, they wanted me to leave it outside the dance hall, but it was unsupervised, and he had all these other bags. He's like, um, I don't think you understand exactly what I'm carrying in this bag. This is the kind of stuff that you don't simply leave outside. Yeah. Like, I had different... I had like eight different filters for camera lenses, three different lenses if you exclude the one that I already had equipped to my camera, and I was like, yeah, no, I don't want to leave this outside. And then, so I reluctantly left it outside, so, and then when I went inside, I saw other people taking photos and stuff, and they had backpacks twice the size of mine, and I'm like... What the fuck? So I'm like, oh, so let me get this straight, and I tweeted about it, because I was just super salty. I was like... I would be too. I was like, so let me get this straight. I'm not allowed to bring in my bag of camera equipment because they suspect me of bringing alcohol inside the concept, which is understandable, but at that point, why not just search every individual bag? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, you, let, you let these people through... Without even questioning them. And they've bit. got bags twice the size of mine... And they had no issue, but I can't even go in there with my camera equipment. I wasn't even old enough to drink at the time. Didn't stop, didn't stop me though from last year though. That was a mess. Ugh. 
I'm not having as bad of a Vietnam flashback as I should be right now, but I'm, it's... I'm already kind of buzzed. I remember this being a very good tasting drink. I think what really did me over was the Kirno uh, Caramel Shmirnov. Yeah, that, that'll do it. Th that was probably the thing that probably made me more disgusted about vodka than anything else. I don't mind vodka. It's just... Um, I think UV is like the only vodka I'll ever drink. It's actually... Now, I'm sure there's other better tasting vodkas that I've never had or don't care to try. But UV Blue ain't bad. Yeah, Smirnoff, I don't like. Didn't didn't you uh, get me... No, no. It was at Pride Fest one time. I think it was Pride Fest 2016 in Milwaukee. And Excuse me. We ended up getting... What? No, it, it was a Coke and rum, right? No. Yeah. It was with Red Bull and vodka. Oh, Ooh. Red Bull and vodka was good. And I don't know what vodka they had, but it, I, I couldn't drink it, so I gave it all to you, and you were really buzz cat. Yeah. You, I had to cure you in, in, in a loaf bag. Why did you have to say Red Bull? Now I want Jaeger bomb shots. Oh, God, Jaeger. Oh. Jaeger, or, sh I say shots, but they're really served in, like, chaser glasses. Or at least the last one I had was. Rumplements. <laughs> oh, my God. And then me, uh, me Shade, and Ernick. The only time I've ever actually done a spring vacation during college, I traveled 20 minutes west into Caledonia, and that's as far as I've ever gone Caledonia? for... Caledonia? Yeah. That's the furthest I've ever gone for a spring vacation anywhere, and it was just to hang out with other furries for a week, <laughs> and I got trashed for a week on only rumplements. We watched so many... Good times. Caledonia's like in the middle of no. That's nothing but cabbage fields out there. And lakefront. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't know about lakefront. That's uh, more of a shade, scene. Shade. Actually, the location where Shade uh, lives, he's he's not far from the two coal-generated uh, power plants. Oh well. And he is not far away from the lakefront. So, really nice place though. I miss Shade. Shout out to Shade. I love you. Oh, hey, would you look at that? Bill Nye actually has a uh, TikTok. He's of about he, does. To, he is about to put the science in our brains. I can't believe how old... Hey, there we go. When was this taken? Last week. Who took it? Oh, nice. Oh, wait, are those, are those the pictures I'm, I'm thinking of? Yes. I don't know, maybe, maybe tomorrow... I want to get back into taking fursuit photos again. Let's see. Ah! I love that picture. I kind of want to take pictures of me and my car tomorrow. Oh, Let's no. do it. If you want to, I'm, I'm totally game. You show me what how to use this? the camera and I will do it. Hey, uh, do you guys know that Tommy Wiseau has his own underwear brand? Yep. <laughs> when was this a thing? Of course he does. <laughs> Tommy, why? Of course he does. He's got... Okay, so let me get this straight. He's got Mars jackets and... Boxer briefs, or whatever you want to call them. The boxer briefs. I did not know that. I didn't. I didn't realize he got in into the like the clothing industry. He, he went into everything. He got accidentally famous. Yeah, because <laughs> of a movie. Because of a shitty movie. Which, if he pays a dollar per each time that it was downloaded, he'd be a millionaire. I oh, wish the. I wish the Andy had. Like, different movie quotes on them, though. Like, I didn't hit her! I did not hit her. <laughs> I did not. Hi, doggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, doggy. I will show them. I will prove them. Or, no, I've... That was an awkwardly long movie, which was glorious. It was ridiculously long. It was way too long. I'm, I am so glad I did get to see that, because, uh, holy moly love scenes which were all really just one recorded Ooh. session it's just they had to split it in two or three times they had three love scenes in that movie and the butt shots of him and the butt shots the gratuitous butt shots of Tommy Wiseau which still haunts my dreams and I I didn't have a bad ass that movie. I have not seen The Room I got it 
He does have, have it. it. You have the room? Of course. I've got every odd uh, movie. Dude, I want to see that. If you have to watch the room, you have to watch Eraserhead afterwards. What's Eraserhead? Oh, God, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really fucked up movie. I've never even heard of this movie. This is a is it... really weird movie. Oh, my God. I, th I, I think I told Xander the Blue that I saw Eraserhead, and he was like, Oh, dude, why? Oh, <laughs> You just reminded me of something that I sent him recently. Xander? Yeah. So, you know how... For those who don't know, Chicago has this very distinctive drink mm. that some people would say tastes like pencil shavings if it were in liquid form. Ugh. That is called Jepson's Malort. Oh, Malort. See, you know where I'm going with this. Did you know that they have an eggnog flavor now? What the hell? And I want to, I, I, I unironically want to buy a bottle of this. And people look at me like, you have a fucking problem. Because it's my lord. No. <laughs> Cat here says, I do. I, I Wait, found what, out that what? What are you doing? Oh. I have a problem because <laughs> I unironically like my lord. Despite it actually being the worst alcohol I've ever tasted. Yeah, it was incredibly bad, and I had a small cap full, and it was disgusting. I'm looking at you that way for two reasons. Malor and that fucking shirt. Hey, I like this shirt. <laughs> Majira for life, bro. I'll burn that shirt. Why? That's... He's a good content creator. <laughs> he, now, Kurt ends being a sourpuss in a sourpuss ways. Slightly jealous. Majorly salty. <laughs> Wait, why? Explain. Why are you jealous? I'm jealous because he, he's famous for being a furry. Well, there are so other reasons. So beyond that. Um, to the point where he's he's collaborated with other YouTubers, he has his persona. Like, props to him for pushing us into the direction of, of mainstream. And in positivity. In positivity. Right, like a like a positive view. More jelly than anything because of how famous he is. I remember the first time I met him, I was super nervous. You know what you Granted, should do? He's busted his ass. He's worked so oh, hard. Oh yeah, yeah. And not to mention all the things that people ridiculed him for, even though a lot of his friends were like, "Yeah, this is a non-issue, guys. This actually could have helped us." But instead, people made a big stink about it and made it look like it made him look bad in the long run for it. You didn't. There was a time that he was offered an interview from H with H three H three. Oh, H. And a lot of people took issue with that because he had had somebody on his podcast prior to this being a th potential thing with a guy who had anti-trans thoughts or beliefs or whatever. At least that's what. One individual told me, I don't know how much of that is actually true, but I was like, okay, but, I mean, H3H3, a lot of people know, uh, one of my friends actually had his videos featured on one of their episodes. I mean H3N3. No, no, it's no, it's H3H3. H3. Yeah. I thought it was H3N3. No. Who's H3N3? That sounds like a disease, like a flu. A a irritable bowel movement. That's that guy and that girl, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what ended up happening was he was given a chance to show up on his podcast, like actually be interviewed in person. They were going to pay for his flight and everything, which is above and beyond what most people or companies will do. And um, he wasn't completely sold on it yet, but he was thinking about it. And then a lot of people said, yeah, no. Or at least this is my interpretation of the events. He didn't. They didn't want him to do it, and he ended up having to turn him down, and it made him look bad. So then they ended up making a furry episode where they bought DH Gate suits, which are notoriously known for just ripping off pre-existing fur suits out there, oh, like God. yeah. Which is unfortunate, but he wasn't there to tell him about that, or that, or. It's not sure that if he would have, or if the subject was ever brought up. No. So if the subject was never brought up, they still wouldn't know. But then again, it never happened. Yeah. Whoa. I think the UV blue hit me. Hit me hard. You think so? Yeah. 
You're walking kind of funny. I am kind of walking funny. Maybe I feel... Water. Good thing we have this water jug down here. Brought to us by Cherry Coca-Cola. <sighs> Cherry Coca-Cola. All right, let's... 12 fluid ounces, 150 calories of pure... Diabetes in a can. Diabetes! That dude's like 80-something years old now. Uh, Wilfred Brimley? Yeah. I didn't even realize he was like a, an actor in a movie or something until somebody brought it to my attention. I was like, really? In what In what movie? I, I can't remember. Hang on, I gotta... Let me look he has up. the internet at his hands. I you have... know who still looks good? Lou Ferrigno. I don't know. I forget what he looks like, but... Lou Ferrigno was the, inc the original TV Incredible Hulk. From the 80s? Yeah. Huh. I had a major crush on him, too. Oh, oh damn it. He died. Who? Will Br he Will died this year. Who? Damn you, 2020. The, the diabetes guy. I'm going to miss your mustache. You know, he was like in the, uh, I forget oh, what commercial, but he know it, it. Yeah, it was the way how he Get pronounced your diabetes. diabetes. He's test like, diabetes. Mm, diabetes. Really? He was a Marine? Really? He was a Marine in the Korean War. Wow. Mm -hmm. This dude saw action. Wow. Let's see. Um, filmography. I want to see if there's any like movies that I'm familiar with or have heard. Oh. Oh. That face you're making doesn't look Oh, too that good. needs more cola. Oh, A lot more. I didn't realize. I didn't realize it was that much vodka because it looked so little. He was in Seinfeld. He was in Seinfeld? Yeah, As who? In, um, U U.S. Postmaster General Henry uh, Atkins. Oh, right. In the episode Junk Mail. Uh. <laughs> he was the Postmaster General. That's that's amazing. He was awarded at the Cable Ace Awards, Golden Boot Awards, Maverick Movie Awards. Out of those three, he only won a Golden Boot in 2005. That sucks. He was ripped off. And, of course, it mentions the infamous diabetes commercial. Diabetes. Unfortunately, it seems like that's the only time I've ever really seen him. God damn it. 2020, why did you have to take another gem from us? You took Sean Connery, and now you took him. What next? And Eddie Van Halen. Oh, yeah, that's right. Although, he, he hasn't been doing so good since the beginning of the year anyway. Oh, so yeah. Unfortunate, as I've been following up on that since January... When Neil Peart died in the beginning of the year, like the very beginning of, of the year, January 4th, which is my drummer idol, and I can't play drums, but I absolutely love him as a drummer. Oh, no. Oh, no, don't. I'm going to... I might actually take a third drink of this UV. I forgot. Oh, that's should be good. February. Kobe Bryant. Oh yes. yeah. Oh my God, man, that's still strong. I don't know why. What did you put in there? Put water in there. I'm not. I no. Oh, I am not gonna put water in my booze. Oh, uh, this was a horrible year. What? This was a horrible year. Yeah. More horrible than other years. Kirk Douglas. Ah, uh, what's his? That name sounds familiar. What did he do? He. He did a thing. That's Michael Douglas's dad. He you gotta have to remind me. Michael is... Douglas is married to Catherine Zeta Jones. He he beat cancer. Yeah, but I don't know what he's known for. He's an actor. What did he act in? Um, this this shows how old I am, guys. I'm still, I'm probably like the youngest. Actually, I am the youngest person in this room right now. Michael yeah. Douglas filmography. Wait, Michael Douglas? Michael Douglas, his dad. Passed away this year. Oh, okay, all right. <clears throat> uh, fatal Attraction, ba Basic Instinct, Falling Down, and I lost it. None of these sound like movies I've actually seen. And I lost everything. Celebrities that have died in 2020. Oh, if Sigourney Weaver dies, I'm going to be super depressed. Oh, yeah. Um, I had a crush on... Uh, d d Alex Trebek. Alex Trebek. Alex Trebek. That name oh, sounds vaguely familiar. He was the guy on uh, Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Oh yeah. That was last Damn. one. Damn. I can't believe that. I but you know what? 
for the last two I years. I Snell did a uh, tribute to all three of those actors. Well, I know he wasn't doing so well health-wise. Sean Connery, because they had that skit. Was oh, yeah. Sean Connery kept... Horash, no. Trebek. Yeah. And I slept with your mom, Trebek. Yeah. <laughs> I can only blame my shelf. <laughs> Book fell on my head. I can only blame my shelf. Because oh. it's funny, because that's how he pronounces his S's. Yes, yes, yes. I'm dog shitting today. <laughs> Parker, Wasn't guy. he knighted? Yes. Yeah, so then it would have been Sir, Sir Sean Connery. Yeah. Do we have any of those Sesame Steak stuff? Yeah. That's right here. Ooh, I think I might need... There we go. I need sustenance. I'm not going to look at that list anymore. It's it, depressing. Yeah, I remember I, when 2016 was like the depressing year of my life because Alan Rickman, yes. the guy who played Professor Snape, died. Yep. All the other... And Angel from Dogma. Yeah, I was like, man, yeah. could this like could any year in my life ever get any worse in 2016? Prince, Prince died in 2016. Oh yeah, yeah. And then 2020 happened four years later. I was like, shit, maybe this is actually the worst year of my life. Like, looking back in a decade, because now we can think of easily from 2010 to 2020, literally a decade within a decade. Because you can say 2004 and 2014 as a decade, but now we're going to go officially a decade within a decade. This past decade has been interesting, but holy moly, have we started opening a can of worms in the, in the I was going to say the 1920s. You know what, the <laughs> 1920s was a can of worms too in, in a lot of ways, but oh yeah, um, the 2020s is going to be another decade of, I don't want it to be, but maybe possibly well, can of worms. I think... The years are going to get crazier, but I think um, what, with what I've been hearing, it seems like they have a valid vaccine for this virus now. Yes. But it'll probably take a good long while before everybody actually gets vaccinated for it. Mm -hmm. Like right now, what they want to do is, it's already been approved in the UK, uh, the Pfizer drug, I think. Mm-hmm. And um, what they're going to do is, once it gets approved, all the emergency workers and first responders, we'll so get it. like nurses, doctors, firefighters, and police. And not to mention maintenance staff of hospitals and right. of those constituents as well. And they're all going to get it first. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then it'll gradually go down the line from who is the most essential to the least essential. My my dad will be the very first one in my family to get it because he works at a hospital, not as a doctor, not as uh, well. He is pretty much in the background making sure things stay on. Uh, but more likely, he would be one of those first people in Wisconsin to probably get tested, uh, not tested, but um, probably get the vaccine. So, of any one of my immediate family, he'd be the first one to get it. So being in vaccines. Um... Shout out to uh, Atris um, Otter. He is a friend of mine that I met back in Anthrocon 2019. Is 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 his mate a Sergal? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I'm thinking of um, a different o Otter. Yeah, this guy. For he was a Navy corpsman, and now he's like they're a nurse or some. He works in the medical field. That's all I know. He made a video on vaccines. Which I highly recommend people go check out because it's actually formative. I found out that they use egg product or egg protein in some of their vaccines, which I didn't even know. That's interesting. I did not know that. And then when he made the the funny thing was when he made the argument about you know some of the, like some of the anti vaxxers saying, oh well, it's got this in it, and now it'll kill me. And then he said something about salt which is something that we consume on a daily basis now because of America. Yep. Um, and he corn. said he said something along the lines of it can be used as an accelerant for explosives. It's like, I can confirm this. You and I can both confirm this because we shot Soviet-era rounds that used salt for primer instead of gunpowder. Yes, uh, the uh, primer actuators in ammunition, uh, especially back in the day, the whole reason why they use salt 
in Burdan primed cartridges. Now, modern stuff, they don't use as much salt. You still should clean your weapons after you use them. But the older Burdan primed primers are corrosive because of the salts. They use a lot of salts for preservatives so that you can make a bullet 100 years ago and it'll fire today without problem. However, it's much like rubbing salt in your car in Wisconsin. Yeah. You're just asking for trouble. Um, Especially yeah. if it's not cleaned. Yeah, oh god, yeah. And I've. There was one local furry who's asked me about, you know, gun stuff because. Eh, pretty well, not advanced firearms collector, but I, I'm an amateur. But one local came to me and asked, hey, Dustin, I have a problem. I checked my Mosin the other day and um, I realized uh, I'm, I'm looking at a sewer pipe. <laughs> Which means he never cleaned his his rifle after he last used it, and he used communist era Burdan Prime oh. cartridges, which are highly corrosive, and it literally destroyed his barrel from the inside out. Aren't they also copper steel? It's steel copper washed, so it's actually it, it will attract a magnet, but it's got a thin coating of copper to simulate brass, but it really is there for looks. It's not really meant to do anything. I have a question. Yes. When I went hunting. Yes. When I was like 25, 26. Y you were a hunter of goose? I was. We hunted a tree. <laughs> <laughs> because we couldn't shoot the birds. Ah. Wait, um, did you go pheasant hunting? Yeah. Ah, you were hunting birds. Like a cat. Except with shotguns. Shotguns. You wouldn't hunt with rivals? He shot a, he shot a pheasant two hundred fifty yards away with a thirty odd six, clean through the heart. Shot through the heart, heart. and you're too late. Anyway, you gave pheasants a bad name. <laughs> anyway, continue, puss. So, we used like a salt type ammo. Oh, so you're so you're looking at. Very small, like, um, not 22, is it? Something like this? I don't know. Why do you That's have okay. that in your room? I have no idea. It actually came in, in, in a box of brass shells. I wait, it's it was, not... It was wait. a spray. It was a very wide spray of salt. It's live. Oh, shit. Yeah, and that came in a box of spent casings, and I was making blank ammo with it. it is that what 556 five, actually looks like? Yeah. Damn, that's tiny. It is tiny. I was expecting it to be a See, little See, that's bigger. what scares me, is getting alive out of all those... Like empty shells. It won't do anything. Like tap, tap. No, don't do that. Dad, please. Oh, no. See, don't yes. operate. I almost did that it. once by being stupid, and yeah. it was actually funny at the See, same that's time. That's what scares me about it. Don't an operator Just... made a video about that. So, that's what scares me. Like tap, tap. Bop. So me and Klaus went to a <laughs> rifle range in 2014. Would that backfire, by the way? Would, how, what would happen? Uh, the case would be more dangerous than the bullet itself. Right. Outcome. Go boom. Yes, pretty much. There was a time when me and Klaus were opening a Soviet spam cam of ammo and we didn't bring a um, can opener, an actual can opener to oh. open the can. So we used a flathead screwdriver and, oh, and a rock no. and we tapped directly into the metal not knowing where the primers were oh. and we didn't blow up. <laughs> Wrong pipe. Not COVID. <clears throat> That's salty. But these are really good. They these are, are like my favorite little snacks. I kind of wish we had more now. My brand. I want me some se sesame oat I brand think, sticks. Those are from I think that's Menards. Really? Yes. I forget that they sell food. Yep, right in the front. I, f I feel like we should have like bags of sesame oat brand sticks for Wolf so that when he comes over, he'll just. Oh, I want to kill him with it. No. <coughs> I didn't. Damn it, cat. What have you done? I went and that was my own fault. So now I started, you're, la you're laying and I started eating, talking, coughing. I started talking while I was eating That's salted your own sesame. own damn fault. Yep. So then you were talking about <laughs> going on to, there we go. the wide spray from the shotgun. Yeah. 
think I got Why it. was it such a wide spray? Because it's probably pellets and birdshot. Mm. Little tiny Look little out. balls. See, yeah. all I know is that gun go bang when you pull trigger. Yeah. I've actually never fired a shotgun. Really? Fun. I never fired. Oh, it's fun. It is fun. You've, you just got to be really careful and even, when you use it. Even the poo says he even shired a, fired a shotgun, and I, I have fired not. A, I own And I've fired rifles, but not not a shotgun. The only thing I would love more than you that. You cleaned mine. Yes, I have, but I never shot it. We all, should fix that next time should, you come over. Yeah. All the Indian videos of the, of the Indians testing the new weapons in the different... Like, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that weapon never meant to... Or, I don't think that ever made it to market. All the guys were like... It was, like, like, it was like a Rex something like shotgun. It was like a Rhino like yes. rifle. Yes, and it was like so powerful that these guys were like in swivel chairs and they actually fell Boom, out. Boom! Like, ah! I love those videos so much. Those and things then, are funny. And then one of the guys didn't have a good grip on the shoulder. Not in, in his shoulder now. pocket. Yeah. And it literally went over his shoulder and momentum smashed the bulletproof glass behind him. Behind him. And it was enough to shatter it. It didn't break because it's meant to be it shattered. Just, it just flew right out of his hands. And then just spider cracked. i, I got to find this now because I know what you're talking about. It's just, you can tell that these are all like the elite rich of the Indian, you know, like East Indian or, world. Or maybe they were either Pakistani or Pakistani. Arabian. Or yeah, I want to say Arabian. they were Middle Eastern. Yeah. Yeah. But they seem to be having a lot of fun. Oh, they were. But it's like... You knew they had nothing... They had no idea what they were doing. Okay, no, that wasn't a shotgun. It was a rifle. It was a rifle, yeah. It was a 5.57. Five, Holy shit. <laughs> I don't know nothing about guns. That's so caliber. If he's saying that, then... That's, if... that's more than 50... Oh, it's called the T-Rex rifle. Oh, jeez! Yep, that's the one. That is a point five, what five five seven? <laughs> he he just eats the the glass window. Boop. Did you say point five seven yep. seven or point yep. five five seven? Point five five seven. So that is literally fifty six caliber. So is that like a rifle or a revolver, but in rifle form? That's but actually higher? a rifle cartridge. So that's bigger than fifty cal. All I know is that every person that I've seen that fires this thing gets they tossed around like a bitch. Yes. Yep. I'm never like it seems like the most impractical thing yeah. ever it made. Is. It is. But people I made mean, it anyways. It that would be. probably bruise me in one shot, whereas eighty rounds of eight millimeter Mauser left me black on my shoulder for about a week. Like black from bruising. But that would be one enough. One cartridge of that would probably put me out for the rest of the that's day. Good. It's like getting punched by, like, I don't know how many... Punches. Dwayne Johnson! This is making me miss range day. Oh, fuck. And to think that we did it the, the, we did the it weekend like a... before shutdowns happened. Actually, I think it was after. No, no, it was before. Are you sure? It was before, yeah, because McMillan Yeah, you're closed. right. You're right. It was because... the weekend before the world started changing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm so glad we got to actually fire those rifles for the first time, because... I actually liked firing the, what was it, the Type 36 that you brought, or the Type 38? The the Type 38 is 6 mil, 6.5 millimeter. The Type 99 is 7.7 .7 millimeter. I'm glad we have to do first squared before this all happens. Yeah, yeah that, that was like too. the last. I think first squared and TFF were like the last two furry conventions that actually happened in the States. Yeah. Before the virus came. It was the before times. It was the before times. Actually, no, it was during the times, the present times, but it wasn't as wide scale as people thought it was. In fact, they were still talking about it when we were there. Yeah. At First Squared? Yeah, they mentioned uh, viruses in Wuhan. Yeah. Like, oh, and I yeah. was like thinking, huh, hope nobody goes and visits China. And, and all think... of a sudden, everything just kind of fell apart after that. Yeah. Uh, it was literally like... I e even remember at the end of January, there was news about a virus in China that was discovered and being spread around, but it's no worry because they're taking care of it. Little yeah. do we know that the whole world is trying to figure out a way around it. Actually, they started talking about it. I think it was, yeah, it was 2019. Yeah. The, like yeah. December. Like December. Yeah, 2019. November, December. Now, I don't know what I had in December of 2019. But I had my ass kicked by a by a, a, a like a virus bug for like three weeks. 
I haven't gotten sick yet. Knock on wood. Yeah, like I I do not want to get sick by this thing. N but... Nine nine months, nine to ten months now. I have gotten myself frequently tested because my building offers free testing, and every every time I've gotten tested, it's shown up negative. So I must be doing something right. Yeah. Because uh, we've had a couple of cases in our building already, but it was always in places I'd never really worked at. Uh, I will say I'm glad that I was able to get my parents' house sold before all this. Move up here before all this should happen. Oh my God, that'd be in hell. Because I would be, I would be in hell right now. So yeah. So what do you think of Wisconsin now that you're out of uh, Illinois? Illinois for officially a year? It sucks. Ah. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? It sucks. I hate it. Pray. Really? Um, yeah. Isn't I miss, like. I miss Chicago so much. You miss really? Chicago? Yes. I couldn't drive there. I went. Actually, the last time I went down to Chicago, was September. September. See, yeah, we're, I was we're taking... coming from different worlds. So I grew up going to Chicago on a weekend basis. Like I wouldn't every, mind you visiting. were clubbing every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clubbing cats. I was a clubbing cat. I mean, I ran into my assistant manager from my my first job in a club in Chicago. Really? I was in my undies. <laughs> I was sitting on a box. And what oh, did he no. say? She said, Were you sober? Wow, Joe. Uh, not especially. <laughs> well, at least and she just kind of like walked away and just. No, she was like, All oh, right, Joe. <laughs> uh. <laughs> she was into it. Funny thing about that. Um, I, truth be told, I wouldn't mind visiting Chicago, but God forbid, I would never want to live in any part of that state. Yeah. Just because of how crazy their property taxes are. Property taxes, um, voids, void voided. cards. Um, See, this is why I love going to Kenosha to drop my car off in the parking lot at the most, most north metro train line, the north end. Then going into Un uh, Union Station, right? Union Station. You could get there from uh, Racine, actually. Yeah. Really? Yeah. There's Sturt actually a Met yeah, it's Sturt event. Really? Yeah, where I live. The only reason I know this is because Atris Otter took the wrong train and ended up in Sturt event rather than where he wanted to be for MFF. On, on the Metra. Yeah. Yes. Really? Yeah. I can go that far. Yeah, you can. Really? You can go to like Sturt event and Racine, take the train that way south. And get yourself on to like an I think they have an Amtrak shuttle or something like it's that there. Pretty much in, in, it's pretty much Milwaukee. Yeah, in, so you don't really need. Yeah, you. Yes, I don't know. Amtrak. Um, what did you say? Uh, Amtrak intermodal in no, Milwaukee. No, what's the other city? Kenosha. Kenosha. Kenosha is metro. Yeah. Because I take the metro down to Chicago anyways. Because you know what? I refuse to drive through yeah. there. I drove. So the metro is yeah. a cheaper. That was the worst decision of my yeah. life. The metro is a cheaper ride. The Amtrak is a more expe a little bit more expensive. But you get there Probably. faster. But you get there faster. It pretty much metro for those who don't know is a commuter train. It's literally a full size train, but acts more like a subway in the sense that it stops in different cities, picks up people, drops off people, whatnot. Right. And it's actually quite still affordable if you think about it. And Amtrak is more of a passenger train. It's more passenger. They actually have a dining uh, yeah. car. Yeah. Although I have never been on an Amtrak station I that it. fancy. I love it. Honestly, I think the fanciest train I've ever been on, and I can't re even remember the name, but it was on our way from Hamburg to Munich when I was in Europe. That was the most quietest train I've ever been on, too. Germany. If you guys ever go to Germany, they have really quiet ass trains. I don't know how they managed to do that. European trains are incredibly they insulated. The tracks well. The track is really what, what really makes it. In Europe, I didn't quiet. know that. In in the uh, in the European community, their 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 uh, rail uh, track network must be well maintained. It is well maintained. And believe me, in Germany, in France, and Italy, they have the best maintained. Um, rail lines in Europe for sure so it doesn't surprise me that in Germany trains are quiet because in France they're also just as quiet too yeah. same in Italy I've the most I've ever traveled on, on a train is through the French government owned rail system called the SNCF 
or SNF, no, SN, so that's SNCF, or in French it's SNCF. And I've always enjoyed those trains going anywhere in France. However, we went to Italy once, traveled through Switzerland, which is my only time I've ever been through Switzerland, is through the Alps. Mm, that's awesome. However, I never, uh, I've never stepped foot in Switzerland despite staying a night in a mountain. I literally was in a tube in a mountain sleeping without knowing it, and that, that's uh -huh. kind of cool. However, what's funny is this is the only time I've ever used an Italian train network besides SNCF. It is called Train, et, train Italia which is literally Italian train. But if you read it wrong, it kind of says uh, it's Italian genitals. <laughs> I would, I'd ride that train. Italian genitals. <laughs> Italian genitals. I would ride that train. Oh, my God. But if I were to travel to Chicago, which I would love to one day, Maybe when this, this pandemic is done, I will probably use a weekend. Well, not a weekend, really. I'd probably use a Saturday, wake up early uh, wake up early in the morning, head down to Kenosha, uh, get on the earliest metro train there is, which is, I think, like 6.30, 7 o'clock or something like that, go down to Union Station and then just make an entire day trip of, of it. Whether you're going to see museums or um, there's the, uh, the old... The oldest camera shop in existence in this part of the country is the Camera Supply Company in Chicago, which I think has been open since, I think, 1887 or 1897. And they have unsold cameras from the late 19th century. Still there, which is a fun place. They have so much there. Would not mind walking around, eating a, uh, e eating a Chicago dog, just walking around until late at night and then I just head back to the Union Station and just take the train back home. I think that would be really fun. I would love to do that. Last time I went, I went down with Keck to go and hang out with Katav. Great person, by the way, to hang out with um, over at Millennium Park. Now, unfortunately, we could not go to the Bean. As we the Bean! Which is probably the first time I've ever seen the Bean, too, because I've been to Chicago many times. Never really went down to downtown Chicago. Did you touch the Bean? No, we couldn't. It was getting off. It. It's because of COVID. You need to touch the Bean. I want to touch the Bean. Touch the Bean next time. But but when I do it, this time, I'm going to do it in fursuit. Because now and I have... rope it. Cause, well, rope the damn Bean. I don't know. Be brave. Be brave. You must touch the bean because we've all touched the bean. Yeah, by the way, since I, I kind of already announced it, I now have enough money to actually, or at least according to the estimate that I last had, an estimate set and submitted to a fursuit maker, I now have enough for said estimate of a fursuit. So now I'm going to be looking into getting one probably around February. From... Yeah. Um, I'm I am i am kind of torn. I, it, right now I'm looking at either Twinkie, or because I really like how they do, especially Katav's suit, um, their wolf designs. Okay. Or made for you, and I uh, feel like made. made I, for you. I, I I'd be lying if I said I wasn't kind of motivated or motivated by the fact that they kind of allow modding to their suits to happen, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. They're, they're one of the few makers that is actually o completely open about that sort of stuff. Which a lot of people have given them great praise for. Twinkie? No, uh, made for you. Ah. They actually add the zipper. The zipper? Yeah. In what way? You know. Oh, that kind of zipper. Yeah, they're, they're not even quiet about it anymore. They have an After Dark account for their stuff. Who is it again? Made for you. I'll have to check it out. I want to see all of those zippers now. Italian ass. Italian, Italian ass. ass. My buddy Eduardo Gigliotti has an ass. Damn! Holy moly, I want to grab that ass. And he's 
Dude, it's the face of crap my ass. He's like, mm -hmm. it's like, oh yeah, I know you want to. Oh, I know you want to grab the ass. I've been busy. <laughs> I don't know. I think I might wait another three years before getting an upgrade. Yes. Really? I didn't even. I was just guessing. I didn't realize you were actually looking to get a new suit. Well. At least for the time being, I'm more looking forward to, to just renovating my, my bodysuit to make it more durable and whatnot to last the next two or three years until I start looking around to see what's out there. Hopefully by then, you know, I can save up money, which, depending on how much the average suit costs, I can certainly probably make. Depends on the maker. Yeah. Like, mine, um, it's probably roughly close to 5K. Now... I could either go back to the same maker I've always gone to, because I've only done one fursuit maker for all my suits so far. Really? They're all from the same maker? They're all from the same maker. I didn't know that. So, I don't know if I want to keep that tradition up and, you know, ask... I think it would be fun to see your fursona... Done in a different way. Yes. And as I was thinking... Same with me. Not just a different species, because I want to make a husky version of my fursona... What same, would you call yourself? Same color pattern. I'd still be Kurt and Sourpuss. It's just to be Sour Husky. Sour, Pissed off Husky. Kurt and Sour Husk. Aww. Sour Husk. But I wanted to see a Husky version. I want the curly tail. I can kind of see you being made by, like, DHC. Like, especially with their new DHC design. DHC would be fun to see. Like, I know Jusky, when he got his done, like, so Jusky had an original... Like old school timey DHC suit. Yep. Then he got yep. it upgraded to the new one and it actually looks really good. Same with, uh, what's his face? Avwuff. He also had like an older model, like version of DHC. Then got an upgrade from the same maker and it looks like a completely different suit maker. See, I would not mind DHC and I would not mind Made for You. Made for you, I hear, though, is really hard to get into. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh... Which, which is why I'm looking for a backup in case that falls through. I really hope it doesn't. be ready to wait a long time. And that, too, which is maybe also another reason why me um, doing necessary repairs to keep my suit up is just in case uh, the waiting lists, like in East German Trabant, um, in that? case it's uh, East... East German car, mm. where uh, the average uh, East German citizen would have to wait about 11 years before you Okay. Can, like, save up the money to buy one. It's not so much, like, they have to wait that, that long until they can get it. It's just right. how long they need to save to pay for it. Um, my suits are in still really good condition. It's just... Uh, I think they could really use a nice, not revamp, but like a reconditioning. Pretty much just maintaining stuff, make things look better again. That way, if I do end up getting another fursuit, Dustin 3.0, which again, I'm not totally... Um, there is not a... I am not set on one fursuit maker right now. So if you, just for like the sake of like toying with the idea, who do you think would be fun to see make a Dustin 3.0? I mean, I, I mean, do what, like... What builders do you like? Uh, actually, it's been, since I, I've been pretty content with my first suit right now, but I haven't really looked at anything yet, but I would like to... I should probably look... Much like how I look at the car market, I should really look at the fursuit manufacturers, if you call it, in my own sense of the word. Because I would say I would like to see a DHC version, a mixed candy version. Mixed candy, that would... Yeah. That would be cute. It would be fun to see a toony, more toony version. I'd also like to see a very realistic version. Yes, actually... That what, would be fun. 
Um, it's not to say that Dustin 2.0 will get fully retired. I will still actually wear him. Oh, yeah. Um, Dustin 1.0, or also known as by the community, Classic, Dustin Classic, if you will, he is fully retired. Granted, he's in good shape for how old he actually is. I don't wear him as much, or I don't really wear him at, at all. But I keep them because I know that it's my first suit. It's much like a first car. It's hard enough to give up. Um, but Dustin 2.0 is actually a suit I still plan on wearing for the foreseeable future until it might get so worn out that I will be forced to retire him. But right now, he's in good shape, so mm -hmm. that's not so much an issue. But it would be fun to get a Dustin 3.0 in a different style, which my next style will definitely be more adult-looking. Uh, not the uh, uh, adult where you have a zipper between your uh, legs and whatnot, but more adult in the sense of grown up, Just looking like he's a mature. very very grown up husk. That's something that I would love to get in the next two or three years at some point. Meaning, beginning in the next two or three years. Right now, there's other things that I'd like to rather do, but um, what's that? You said mixed candy or? Make candy. Yeah, I hear they make good ones. Uh, they made Kizmas recently. Kizma, is he a husky? Uh, yes, yes, ki yes, yeah, he is. Kizma just got his suit and it looks really nice. How do you spell that? Uh, K, I Z, M A, M A, and then I don't, I don't I know if that's his his like his actual Twitter handle, but I do know that he's kind of well known for being uh, thirsty. Yes, with his uh, Telegram sticker pack. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The I, I know now it's... and later stickers that I've seen in almost every group chat known to my knowledge. Known to furs. Is that him? Yep, yeah, that's him. That's his new suit. That is a hot looking suit, and I can only see his ass. <laughs> I think oh he... my god! I think he was actually hanging out with first the guy who runs the fursuit butts Twitter account when that happened. Dude, that's like my crack right there, and it's literally my crack. Literally just a bunch of fursuit asses. Oh my god! Oh yes! Oh, Kizma, yes, yes. He is like the most sticker pack of any furry that I know. And they're all like, from what I've seen, now and later, Quick Jackson, which makes really good stuff, by the way. He made my ref sheet. My recent, like, my current ref sheet. Mm-hmm. And actually, you did get some art from Quick recently. Oh, yeah, the uh, the knot one. I think that was like the first time I've actually depicted my Sona with a knot. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have seen that one floating yeah, around. Uh, <laughs> really? Where? On Telegram. Really? Yeah. Where? Be believe me. My, my... Wait a minute. Now I'm kind of curious because this is the first time I'm hearing about my... Oh, it's art being circulated. It's I think it's been like a month or two ago, but it is circulated around art from here and there. That that moment when you see somebody that you know and you're like, I know this person. Like you find not safe for work art, and you're like, I know this person. Like I've actually talked to them on like either a regular basis or I've seen them in person multiple times, and I found their gif. It occurred in. Yeah. So then you know the beautiful art done by Cywolf, of you and me. Yes. That is a beautiful piece of art. Yeah. And you know what? That still gets circulated around four years after the fact. Yeah. And you know what? I have so many friends of mine that come to me and say, God damn it, Dustin. I lost my wood because of you. Oh, why <laughs> is that? Then they would post a picture of uh, us uh, grinding wood together. And it's like, see, I was having a very good masturbatory session until I found your art. It's like, wow, that's, oh, wait, I know this person. Oh, first suits by Lacey. Oh yeah, those That's are good ones too. One. First suits by first Lacey. Suits by I Lacey. completely yeah. forgot. Yep. I need to make a list. I. Oh my God, there needs to be a list of first suit makers out there that I can just look through. Cause. Oh, it's Nico Husky, and he is banging someone. Oh yes, that's that's Kizma's Ian. Which, by the way, I know that artist, and I've been dying to get commissions from them forever. Um, Skylar Doodles. Uh, uh, I, yep. I have this idea that I want to, you know, pair it with Weichund, who's a plush suit. Okay. Um, because that, that's something I'm into now. 
Right. But I figure I have some time. I'm looking forward to renovating my first suit in the upcoming month or two. But I, I, I kind of want to. Yes. Oh yeah, that's 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 definitely typical. Uncropped uh, version. Nico Husky. Yep. But I uh, like the art that he gets. Nico. I'm yes. Saving that one. Or no, it's actually Nico Haiku, but he's, I, I he's a good husky. He was in like when Vine was still like a thing yeah. before TikTok. He made a couple of like those vines where he'd make really shitty puns and then always end them with a ha ha ha. Yeah, <laughs> I miss Vine. I miss Vine too. Like Spots was another one that I liked. And Spots. His was very short lived. Like he just like got into it like at the tail end, like the very last year. Before they decided, you know, we don't want to do this anymore. I have all of my vines that I've ever made. You made vines? I, I've made a lot of vines. Really? You know what? I have them all saved. But I need to change the file type to... What was uh, the, one we did, the Star Trek one that we did where it was peeing yes. around you? Yes. I worked so hard on that. That was actually good. I want to make a compilation of all my vines. I have all of them. I just need to change the file type to something that can be read by YouTube. You might actually be able to find somebody who knows how to convert those for you. I can convert them for you. Ah, tech service push. The solution has always been around. Uh, has always been was, in front of me. Tech support push. Because I am totally clueless with some technology. So, um, because I can splice video together to make a continuous video, it's just I. I can get you the right format so you can that, do that. And that's because it's going to be weird yet. because there's going to be a lot of screaming involved. I I still need to. <laughs> so while we're on the topic of videos, I still have like videos from like probably well over a year now worth of content from First Squared last year, so 2020, Anthrocon 2019, and then MFF 2019. I haven't done any of those yet. Oh, and then Aquatifer. I completely forgot about that. Uh, I started a quarter for sort of by I kind of finally figured out how to edit not as well as uh, you know most people out there who do vlogs but it's a start and it's not too bad it's just the upload time is terrible that yeah. video was like maybe an hour or so long with all the clips that I decided to put in it yeah it took two days oh wow two whole days before it was fully uploaded to YouTube and, and I remember like being super proud of it because I was like, yeah, this is my first, well, I shouldn't say it was my first edited video, but it was like the first one that I actually did on my own without asking for help. And what's, what's your, uh, what's your YouTube channel to do a shout out for? Uh, I got, I actually got to Google it now because, uh, when the, the way I had to find it for a while was type Commander Wolf Furry. Because I do have because you there's... featured in my channel's profile recommendation page or something like that. I have it there, I just don't know exactly what it exactly is. So, but... it, it's Commander Wolf with an E at the end, but the problem is um, sometimes you'll get, like, the Clone Trooper, which is spelled with two Fs. So, whenever I looked for my channel, I always typed Commander Wolf and then Furry at the end. Because mm. for some reason that works. And you find the channel, which really, I haven't uploaded anything since. The last thing I uploaded was a first squared video from like 2019. Wow. Which was the cupcake roulette thing. I don't know if you were in that panel. I, I think we both may have been in it for a short while because I do remember us being there. I just yeah, remember we seeing everybody suffering. I think they were eating kale cupcakes for a while as well. Oh! I've seen him. I like that suit. He Which one is this one? Uh, damn, I wish I could remember, but he's supposed to be like Nick Wilde. It's supposed to be Nick Wilde. But he had he had like a actual made ZPD uniform. Where was it? Was this Anthrocon? Probably. Yeah, it looks like Anthrocon. It looks like uh, the DLCC second floor. Why do I know that? <laughs> I miss I miss Anthrocon. Uh, Speaking of Anthrocon, you know what's in interesting see this? about Anthrocon is I have never been yeah. to an Anthrocon before. You should. However, I've had more dreams being at Anthrocon than any Oof. other convention Oof. I've been to. 
I, I'm let me tell you this: having lived like maybe two hours away from the biggest furry convention on the planet right now, mm -hmm. I I enjoy going to MFF, but for whatever reason, I just don't get any PCD from it. I went to Anthrocon for the first year, and I was like, I don't want to leave. It was yeah. literally the first convention that I like, first big convention that I actually experienced PCD at. You know what's my first convention that actually my first two conventions in the last year that I experienced PCD from was two that I've never been to before. The first one was Anthro Ohio, and the other was Fur Reality. Anthro Ohio being a totally different experience. I had never been to it. I absolutely enjoyed every minute, every minute of it. However, Fur Reality is still a sub one thousand attendee convention that I have not experienced this since IFC in its earlier years. That most cons that I go to these days are now a thousand at attendees or higher. So like local cons, like small time cons, and. The beauty about smaller cons is that you you will see the same person throughout the whole convention every hour. So en enough so that you actually tend to hang out with them and then get to know them. Yeah, you don't spend an entire weekend trying to find a person you haven't seen in over a year. And then keep missing them because they're going across from one parallel from one part of the convention and you're just circling around each, each other. At for reality, it's impossible not to do that because everyone is there. That was literally me at Anthrocon last year, I was trying to find Atrus because I hadn't seen him since Anthrocon. And uh, the first time I only, like, I saw him was when I was on my way back to my hotel in the main lobby because I was, like, beat for that week or that day and there was no other event that I wanted to go to. And that's when I see him. I was like, bro, I've been looking for you everywhere since I got here. And then, and any time we'd see each other, it was only in passing. So I never really got to say goodbye to him in person. It's Sunday of the convention. That's a lot of blue. Oh my god, what have I done? What have you done? Here. What has science done? Wait, hold on. I, I'm just slowly getting off the buzz. Wait. Right now. What are you doing? Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, if you add water to it, I'm going to be mad. I, I just, yeah. like... I'm still kind of buzzed right now, but I'm less buzzed than I was like maybe 30 minutes ago. I may have to order a pizza for all of us. You know, I'd be another down with that. Yeah. Cola? There we go. Because uh, that's I'm why I bought them. Wow. Yeah, it's been a long time since you've had UV blue. Since I've had anything. And vodka. Hard. Really? So. The only ones that I really like right now is UV Blue Vodka, any kind of spiced rum. I can't do the clear stuff unless it's like Bacardi Lime. And then uh, Sangria. Or whatever that's called. I can't do whiskey. I've tried. Oh and my it god. Does used... not, it does not work. I used to be a fan of Fireball Whiskey and then for some reason... I couldn't. Well, Fireball's great for when you have cold, and that's probably the only reason I would ever buy Fireball, but it's, like, whiskey in general, like, I got the two limited edition Game of Thrones whiskey scotch from Johnny Walker's. Yes, I know exactly the one you're, you're talking about. And uh, the only reason I really got them, to be honest, was the bottle designs. Cause yes. It looks so good. Like, Katab showed, like, shared me a photo of his Song of Ice one. It was like, where did you get that and where can I get one? <laughs> And he's like, I got it from my local liquor store. I don't even know if they sell it anymore. So then I went and yeah, out to a place. And I, I bought both of them. They were both like 30-some bucks a bottle. And I, I don't know. Between the two, the song of Fire and Ice, I'd probably say the Fire one went down better. But that's not really saying much because that stuff was still awful. I, I couldn't even. I tried mixing it with ginger ale because somebody told me that it was supposed to taste good. That didn't work, so I ended up going with Coke instead. That made it more palatable, but it was still kind of disgusting to me. So I just don't really like whiskey. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know, out of the blue, I used to drink Fireball whiskey straight without a problem. And then all of a sudden, bam, my taste buds were like, ew, fuck this shit. And I don't understand, like a lot of other, al like, uh, bourbons. Ooh. Uh, for some reason, it's it's... 
it's getting harder for me to ingest alcohol straight out, out of the bottle anymore for me. I don't know if it's just my taste buds are just saying, hey, um, what's up? We have to revisit our agreement on <laughs> what booze you can drink now that won't not just fuck you up, because I expect that. It's the enjoyment of taste. And for some reason, my body's like, oh, yeah, um, rum, yeah, we're kind of impartial to that anyway, except that one bottle that was smooth as glass. Caribbean. And then... Nutmeg. Nutmeg. And then the other is whiskey is... Oh, yeah, that was good in our books until now. Now we're, like, totally against it. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Um, Vodka, initially, I hated vodka until I got drunk, and then I didn't care anymore. <laughs> That's usually how it starts. Nowadays, I don't mind vodka. Oddly enough, it's something that I hated before that I like good enough, but not enough to buy, but enough to sample and whatnot. This is the only one I would ever get. This would be the only thing I'd probably get still, and this is the first time I'm touching it in six years, and you know what? I'm having a fun time. But then again, podcast, friends, and whatnot. And, and we're also not drinking straight from the bottle and just drinking it straight up. And really? talking about the... Well, North... you are, but that's... Oh, no. That's the only exception. And he didn't really pour himself a big of a glass, so he's sort of good, I, I assume. Talk about the American Fifth Army now. You you went from, like, vermouth to, like, Miller High Life, and now you're having, like, a sample size. Well, or no. I started with Bridge Road. Or White Zinfandel. He is becoming international poos. He's a I connoisseur of wines. What's that? I don't even know why I opened my Miller High Life. Uh-oh. I can't even drink beer, unless it's German. German beer was good. German beer is pretty incredible. It spoiled me. When I went to Europe... Spoiled me, because now I, I can't touch any American beer. It just tastes awful, and it makes me feel sick. American beer is one thing, but European beer in general God. is pretty good. Like, like French uh, 1664 beer is amazing. Cronenberg, oh my God, is good. I don't want to go back to Europe. Believe me, I I would go for about a month or two. Literally, that's literally one of the things I miss about being in Germany. Has to be the Duna stands, the Duna kebabs, because they had like this box. I, f I really wish I could remember the street that it was on, because we like the host family I was with. We would go to this place every day of the weekday mm -hmm. for school, because we we take the train, then we get out of a certain station, walk the rest of the way up this slope of a hill to their high school. I don't know what they call it in Europe, uh, let alone Germany. Well, I, th I think it's like secondary school or something yeah, like that. Yeah, maybe. And uh, there was this donor place where if you got like a donor box, it was like, all right, lamb. Oh, yeah. It was either lamb or beef, um, diced tomatoes, lettuce. It was like a donor kebab. Yeah, yeah, but in a box. In a box, okay. <laughs> and it wasn't like, and they had like a, they gave you f steak fries with yes. this, and then oh. this really good garlic sauce. Now, keep in mind, when I was visiting Europe, I never really liked eating any of that stuff prior to actually going to Europe. Like, I never touched lettuce or tomatoes since, you know, I was like maybe four. I still ate vegetables, but those were the two that just I could not eat for some reason. Going to Europe, I was like, I've been missing out on this for a long, long time. I still can't do onions, but that stuff really made me change on what I want on my sandwiches now. Be like, yeah, I'll, I'll put on lettuce, tomato, just no onion, but best stuff I've ever had, and I really wish we had it in the States. Fireball. Fireball, what's that? You know what Fireball is. Yeah, it's, it's the, the whiskey stuff. The whiskey? Yeah, Fireball whiskey. Bam, 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 bam. I mean, the stuff that, that I remember in France when I eat stuff there, and in other parts of Europe as well, is just really overall good food. It's just, it's, it seems to me it's more pure. No, you took sure. that as a champ. What? You, you just... You just like, whoop, and then, oh. Yeah. No, you sipped it you first. Are, you are professional poos. Yeah. 
Yeah, he, he and he says he yeah. drank that like a Jaeger bomb shot. Oh my god! I had to get the. I had to get. <laughs> you had to get rid I of. I can't talk now. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> we're we're all a bunch of just drunkards. I had to get yeah. rid of it. I don't want to look at it anymore. What? Because it was in my glass. Oh well, that makes sense. Do you, are you a kind of person who sees the glass half empty or half full? That's half empty. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much what. Okay, okay. so du or Dustin's drink is half empty. My, both mine are completely empty. I see. This is half this full. Is, this is half full. And that's oh, water. so now he over confuses us. This is over half full. And then you still have a water. I have not touched you that. You have not touched your water this if entire time. If you actually time. need that's, water, you can perfectly use it because I don't well, need we, it right we've now. Got, we've got. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. That's barely empty. I know, like <laughs> yeah, it's barely empty. It's a full glass of water. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. To me, it's just having experienced European cuisine, not just French, but I've had Italian, German, and Czech. He's had Italian in him. <laughs> and also, too, I had you, I had United Kingdom food. They're a great, great Britain, British. Or, or British cuisine. And you know what? Even as weird as British cuisine is, considering how antiquated it is, like steak and kidney pudding. Steak and kidney what? Pudding. They make pudding in that? And... With steak and kidney. And I thought duck blood soup was like the weirdest thing I've heard so far in my life. And you know what? It's all pretty good. And believe it or not, it's all incredibly healthy. If anything, if it, if it's fattening, a lot of people back then worked hard for a living. Although now they probably have smaller portions because it's so fattening. However, it's still good. Even if it is fattening, it's not as fat as some of the American stuff that we make here. Real quick, what's up? Just name off some first year builders. Just random first year builders. Yeah. You, you have a list. No. Uh, Mischief Maker, made for you. Wait, slow down. Oh. Are you, are you making a list yes, for I me? Yes, I am. <gasps> oh. uh, there's, a, like, you got to forgive me. The only ones I know are, like, the ones that have been around for, like... The big ones. That's fine. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Name, name as many as you can to help me. One for all. That was my very first one, and they rejected me. They told really? me that my fursona was way too simple. Really? <laughs> yeah, they, they did. Wait, they, I, I've never heard of a, a fursuit maker for turning somebody down for being too simple. I have. Back, that back, is so strange. Back in 2011, when I wanted to actually commission one for all oh. for a fursuit, they, I sent them my, my uh, fursuit ref sheet, and they say, oh, yeah, um... we're not going to take you on because your More. fursona is too uh, simple. Fursuit Pursuits. That is a... It's a, not as well known as the other ones are, but I recall it because I remember at one point I wanted to make like a Watch Mojo suggestion for top 10 fursuit builders because, you know, I was that cringy at the time. Yeah. Um, That's pretty cringy. Did, did I say I don't know. We've all? all been cringy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mischief Maker. Yep, you got the... Don't Hug Cacti. You got the... Uh, Twinkie Arts. Do we have Made For You? Made For You. Yep. First Suits by Lacey. Got it. Menagerie works. Never heard of that one. I think um, it's what they're called. The Fuzz Factory. The Fuzz Factory. That, I think, is... Isn't that based out of Brazil? Maybe. I want to say it is. Isn't that where Crash got his? I'm sure, yeah. And his is a cute suit. Oh, yes. It's a cute suit. Who is that Japanese first suit builder that has a really cute... Kimono looking look. Oh, that's yeah. True. You know, I think Addie might know that answer. Yeah. Those are adorable. Um, those. Firestorm Six, a Canadian favorite. Phoenix. Phoenix. Uh, if you you know the ones. Made uh, by Foxamore. Yeah, yes. no, Foxamore got his made by them. I can't uh -huh. remember. And it was Phoenix something? Was it Phoenix Firefox? I don't remember. Um, there was that one. Uh, what else did we say? The beauty about this is that there's so many fursuit makers out there, the choices are unlimited. I know there's Bycats for cats. And there's Bycats for cats, and they do make canines, so. Yeah. Which is actually what the Tiggs has for his fursuit is a Bycats for cats. I personally never liked the design myself, but I don't deter anybody else from going for that. No. 
It's kind of much like a car. It really depends on what personal brand taste. you want to. It's personal yeah. taste. Yeah. I grew up like. I almost got buy cats for cats for Kurt Ann. Really. And actually, I if if I hadn't heard from DHC, I would be a mate for you. Really. For a suitor. Oh because wow. Two weeks later, they contacted me. Really. Yeah. Oh, that, now that would have been interesting uh, what-if situation. I still may end up being a mate for you, sir. More for less. That's More for right. less. Yes, that's right. Mate for less. I, I want to get, um, eventually, once I get my main sona done by whomever it is that I choose, I am hell-bent on getting my second sona, Lepke, made by More for Less because I liked what they did with Zool's second suit. Um, those who don't know, Zul was the suitor, who's also an artist, by the way, um, who had an inflatable belly suit, but a lot of people didn't like the fact that he was walking around MFF That's for right. that because, you I know, most people who have followed him, he knows that he's into inflation, um, right. fat and vor stuff. So they thought that, you know, it was just him being, like, sexualizing his suit. It was like... Guys, he made that, like, well, he didn't make it. He commissioned that suit because of that. Well, that, and plus his old one was kind of getting old. Leave him alone. Yeah. Even, actually, even Majira said that. No one should Who's ever. Majira's builder, is it? Um, Mischief. Although. Oh, mis Mischief. Mischief. Makers? It, yeah, Mischief <laughs> Makers. I had originally wanted to go with them, but from what I've been hearing so far, uh, you're looking at maybe. Anywhere between two to five years for waiting. Granted, really? That's it, impressive. Yeah, it's not as bad as, like, OFA is. But, you know, what with everything going on between the original creators of that podcast, don't think it'll, uh... Don't think it was really a good choice for me anymore. What are these? You always find, like, the most interesting, like, things to find to eat. I know. Uh, I've never even heard of... What are these called? Crackling Oat Bran. And this is a Kellogg's? Yeah. Hmm. It's fantastic. I've never seen these at, like, any grocery store. Yep. These are so good. It's one of my favorite cereals. I'm trying to think of other builders. What other builders are there? Thunder Howl. Thunder Howl actually made yeah, a former uh, locals Thunder, pursuit. Thunder Hell? Howl. Oh. It's all Thunder one word. Thunder Howl. They're based out of, I want to say, Phoenix. Arizona? Yep. Oh, wow. I was originally going to go to Phoenix this year. But I wanted to take a road trip down that way. Really? Yeah. What was taking you down there? Um, mainly to visit Atris, because we, we thought about doing it, since, uh, but then things kind of got crazy in their state, and I was like, you know what, it'd probably be better if I just waited until this whole virus thing kind of died down. Because mm -hmm. originally, what I was going to do is like, alright, get myself tested, then take a car, because I was going through the mindset that it probably would have been healthier and safer to go via car down to go visit a friend in the state than risk the chance of being exposed to somebody else at an airline regardless of how cheap it was to fly at the time to go and visit them. What other builders we have? That we can... uh, good question. I think that's all I know of at the moment. I have Buy Cats, Four Cats, DHC, First Shoots by Lacey, First Shoots Pursuits, Mixed Candy, <clears throat> Mixed Candy, Mixed Candy, Mischief Makers, Made for You, One for All. Is there another O Builder somewhere in there? One for All. I mean, we may as well mention my own First Suit Maker. There's uh, Fur Zombie Studios, although wow. I think Rusty may have changed the company Just name to something yeah, else. But uh, as far as I know, her company to me is uh, Fur Zombie Studios. Yeah. Although 
she did change the name. I forgot what it is, but at least for the past... Do I do that? She's not even fully established, like, within, like, the entire fandom. I mean, she is fully established. It's just, she just changed the name, which might maybe hurt her in terms of brand recognition. Jesse, Jesse Frost Suits. I forget what her company is called, but I know for a fact that she makes suits. She's also another maker that actually does fursuit mods. What kind of mods? You know. Oh, those those kind of mods. Those kinds of mods. Yeah, those kinds of mods. The <laughs> for those those unaware, which I'm sure nobody here at this point is isn't, we're talking the zippers. S P H. Jesse Frost. Not that one. Oh. Uh, she's for boys. Gay. She's mated Pass with. Gay bottom. Is she from Canada? Open. Yeah, she's from Canada. <gasps> Yes, I know who exactly who she is. She, who? Who she is, is she? Justin T. Wait, Justin? I I don't remember. I know she's. Uh, I knew her from seventeen years ago. What's the, what's that husky? Uh, that's so cool. Okay, the, that's the black and white husky from New York. Ah, uh, Foman? No. No, it started with a C, I think. C or Z? C, like C, as in like. Cot. I was thinking of cock. Of course. I mean, we're all furries. We're all up. thinking of cock at some point. I, I know the, the name of the person who runs it is Jesse Frost, but I don't remember anything else from that. Jesse T. Frost. Because there was a furry back in the day, during the old Two Cents days, there was a Jesse T. Wolf. I'll be right back. If this is the same person and she is from Canada, and she's very soft spoken. If this is really the case, holy cow, that's so cool. Just small world, absolutely small back in the day world of Whisk. I don't know. It, I, I don't know. To me, I, I find that cool. That there's still a lot of old names in the fandom that I kind of grew up with that are now getting into bigger and larger things in life, which is fantastic. Because really, when you think about it, making a first suit, you bring in the character to life, and I don't care what you think. I think it's pretty cool. What is that? It's uh, Brendan Rogers. They just pulled a pistol out of the drawer. <laughs> Should we make a version of this? Why don't you pause that? Should we just should we just have like what something person? similar to that where then you suddenly pull like one of my rifles <laughs> out of the like bathroom closet? Out of it, the freezer. Uh, out of the freezer. <laughs> and just pull a rifle out of the freezer like oh, go 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 woo, woo, woo. and then just pulling out a German rifle out of the freezer like oh, okay we're gonna need this. <laughs> That's Brandon Rogers. That's the same skit where he's like. What's the worst thing than a child molester? And the guy's like, a child. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he's, like, what's worse than a, he's like, what's worse than a child molester? He's like, a child. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I that's bad and good at I, the same time. <laughs> all I can think of is, he's not wrong. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> What's worse than a child molester? A child. A child? <laughs> <laughs> You're pouring way too much. Ah! The cat is stealing some of my vodka. Vodka. That, that might be a good thing. I don't know. Oh, here. Wait, wait, wait. It smells... What's worse than a child molester? A child. What the <laughs> fuck? Oh, isn't that like a video? <laughs> <laughs> Roger is. <laughs> oh, I was oh watching. Oh my god! Isn't that the UK? Oh. What the fuck? Why is he got a gun in the fridge or the, the kitchen? <laughs> and, I, and as I was telling to him, I was like, I should have like one of my rifles in the shower cabinet and just like open that up and pull a rifle out i said have it in the freezer 
<laughs> All right, let's, this is it, people. Let's move, move, move. Woo, 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 woo. And you just, just start pulling out an AK-47 out of the freezer. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I'm grabbing it by the dong. <laughs> yeah, the, the literal the literal dong. The literal dong. My rifles will have a dong. It, you took that as a champ. You yeah. are absolute professional drinking poos. I'm like a cat that has like, like my whiskers. God. Why? This is this is all your clubbing experience coming back to you. It's like, oh, oh I know what to exactly do with this. Oh. I mean, well, I do. <laughs> but like, you have to realize, that I went to clubs where they celebrated birthday parties for Dennis Rodman from the Chicago Bulls. Jesse Frost. Um, this is the person that I, I was talking that, about. I they actually. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, so how is it spelled? Jesse or Frost? Dude, spelled I with two S's. Wait, hold on. I would love to get a suit from them. Did they make perfect see. huskies first from suits. that first suit maker? Frost. With so you just keep saying Jesse. Well, because that's the owner of the person. Frost Jess. with two S's. But yeah, they made uh, this. They made. She made um, a Majira head, which I actually kind of like, surprisingly. Um, and is this list. a foam base or a resin I, base? I can't remember. I, I want to say foam. I like the looks of these fursuits, actually. Yeah, I know. Uh, they She's uh, made some pretty uh, good ones as of late. That little huff. Yes. Oh, I agree. I even, agree. Even this dude, a Chicagoan, um, Storm. <clears throat> you just moved to Chicago in the last few years, right? Yeah, I think so. He originally was, from what I could tell, a Twinkie Art suitor. And now he's gone full-blown Frost. Wow. And See, that's a more mature-looking... Like a, a, like... I would like to get a mature-looking <laughs> Dustin suit, because I've been puppy Dustin for almost a decade yeah, I've been now. Puppy Dustin. Here's, here's a good one. Yes, yes. I, I would not mind getting a adult, mature-looking Dustin suit. With, like, a trail down the front. You know what? I'm actually really considering having <laughs> a happy trail you going down trail. my chest for my next suit. Because you know what? That's kind of where, <clears throat> much like the styling cues of many cars these days with fursuits, there's there's a happy trail. I would not mind a happy trail. Yep. I, I gotta find the, the dude, because the name of that husky is bothering me i can't for the life of me figure a out a hot and bothered husky <clears throat> oh who who made flips suit who is flips uh the fox the latex fox i'm not familiar with I'm them really like <sighs> i'm familiar with a lot of these these other first uh Furries and whatnot and fursuiters, but I'm not familiar with flips, though. I may end up eventually getting a custom pet suit of... Dust, of uh, Kurt Ann? Kurt Ann's I That's the suit. next thing I want to do when Is I get, get a suit. Pet suit? I not only want to get a pet suit, but I also want to get a custom latex suit made of my Sona. Yeah. Actually, of fun. both Sonas. I knew a... Uh, Furry out of Butler, Wisconsin, who has, I think, um, three or four personas, and they each have a summer and a winter coat. And he wanted, as his goal, to get a winter and a summer version of all of his personas in fursuit form. Which is an incredible undertaking, and that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> That's a lot of. Money. That's a lot of money, yeah. Meaning, of those three or four personas, you'll have two seats, two suits of each, both a summer and a winter coat version of both. That's almost eight suits total. Yes. Oh, Damn. Damn. Which I thought, well, I was being honest with them. I just kind of said, you're crazy. And then later on in life, it's almost he's like, crazy. That's like, what's his name? Uh, the, the, whisk, the whiskey... The Wusky. I only know of one that's Kek. Who's the guy that has like tons of versions of himself with all his friends suit as him? Cyber? Cy Cyber Wolf of uh, Made For You? Is it Cyber? Yeah, because I can only think of Cyber as the only other 
Furia in this fandom was so many fursuit versions of themselves. I thought it was, a, they... ra I thought it was a raccoon husky. No. Oh, Huskoon. Is it Huskoon? Maybe? Huskoon has a lot of... I don't know if he's got a lot of fursuits. He does. I, I only know of the two that I've seen. But anyway, Cyberwolf is one person I can think of in this fandom where they have so many versions of their suits made by different fursuit makers that they literally ask some of their friends to say, how would you like to wear one of my suits for the weekend? And they would do that. They literally called it the Cyber Army back I in the day. That. I yeah, didn't that. she also get it like made from various other people? Like yeah. One for All, DHC. And yeah. Like, it was kind of like a way to show you, it's like, all right, this is all the different examples of one create or character created by various different kinds. I thought that was kind yep. of unique. It's 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 so unique that no other person has done it besides yet. Cyber. Yet. Yet. Because there's probably going to be somebody out there that's going to do it. Prince Arbus. Yeah. Mori Mutt. That's the name. Mori I Mutt, yeah. Yeah. I knew, like, I for whatever reason, I thought it was C. That's the only which, yes, which Maury. is which is funny because I also share a birthday with him as well. Oh yes, you do. Yeah, he's like maybe like ten. Or wait, yeah, he's ten years older than I am, which is scary. He's thirty one. He's an old fuck. <laughs> do we uh, do we remember what Cyberwolf's Twitter might be? Uh, I believe. I don't know. Hold up, I'm pretty sure I have it. Cyber. No, nah, that's not how you spell wolf. I think it is W U F F. Oh God, that's something else I need to do. Are you still making a list? I need to get pixel art of my character. I know that they're made it to Spaz. No, it's a uh, Spaz Fox. It's Cyberwolf. Yep. I think were they originally from Canada? I think she or they were I thought, from I thought the United States, and they. I think they moved up to Canada yeah, with. Yeah, uh, I, initi I initially thought uh, that is it, what is it with spelled? Spaz Fox, Cyber so, Wuff, so S Y B E R and then Wuff. W U F F. I I want to look up their wiki first. Yeah, she's been or they they have been. I don't know their exact pronouns. Oh my god! What? Look at this old picture of them from two thousand nine. Yep. Interesting. Apparently, they've been around since 2005. Said, in, according to Wikifur, they've been inter er, interested in anthropomorphic since 1999. So, around the year that I was born. So, as long as he's been alive. But it doesn't... She became active in the furry fandom in early 2007. Uh, she was a guest of honor. Her first... Appearance as a guest of honor was at RMFC 2012. Huh. Which I... Which is pretty... Ex I would say that's pretty um, expected, considering that made-for-you suits were really becoming uh, the more popular storm by force. Oh, wow. They even have a list of all the different makers that she's had her suits from. Granted, I don't know how old... This really? This really is. Because uh, it says here she's had some from Mango Island Creations, Wildlife, Soki Tupa, DHC, Mixed Candy, Ruffle Designs, One for All, The Critter Factory. That's one that I recall hearing. The Critter Factory. You know, this is actually a pretty comprehensive list as it is. Made for You, which obviously makes sense because she's the owner. Uh, the Phoenix <coughs> List. That's another one that... Yeah, I'm surprised. Or Phoenix something um, that made the odd ones out chip suit. And then that's furred up. Kill code of costumes. Furred up. Suiting. Furred up. Is that a builder? Yeah. Furred. Or I think that's furred up, right? Yeah, that's furred up. Yeah. Furred up or fur it up? That's furred up. Furred up is also another one. But according to this, she originally called her company Azure Coyote Studios which she originally created or she created an LLC or LLC 
in Arizona, but then moved to Florida. So yeah, she is an American for right originally. Yeah, it says here she lived in Tampa Bay, Florida for. That's cool. Is that your pretty comprehensive list? I actually met, I think I met them, or Spaz, the last time I went up to, uh... I actually don't know if it's the Spaz Fox I actually know from back in the day, but if it really is, that's... Spaz Fox is dating Cyber. Yes. Yeah, he... I don't know if that's the same Spaz Fox I knew Probably. back in the day. If he has a uh, DVD of the week, if that's really him... Should be. Wait. Oh, uh, let's see. Wait. Oh, wow. They actually have videos for them. Uh, why don't you scroll up a bit just to see what when website he... are you on? I'm on Wikifer. In the mid to late nineties. You know what? That that might be the Spaz Fox I'm familiar with. I should probably just contact him and say, "Do you know the DVD of the week?" And I will know for a fact if that's probably him. I should. If it that. is him, I'm gonna nerd out <laughs> and then scream. And if it isn't, I'm going to be crying sad. I wonder, wait, what's that called? called? DVD of the Week? Uh, Spaz Fox's DVD of the Week. DVD of the Week. Used to be a website back in the day. Way, way back in the day. This is like back in 2002, 2003. Spaz Fox DVD. What was it? Movie of the Week? Of the Week. Movie of the Week, yep. I'm going to see what I get. No. Damn it. Because this was on the Two Cent Show back in the day. And yes, I have been around this fandom long enough to say I too have definitely watched or have heard Two Cents back when it was still being on the air. And uh, Uncle Kage's uh, News of the Future, no. Because Uncle... Because Uncle Kage, uh, back in the day, had a, yes, news from the future, bringing in tomorrow's news today. Yeah, oh my god. Going Good times. Memory lane. Holy fuck, it's Putting been so long. Putting on your nostalgia goggles. Holy Christ, I'm getting old. <laughs> I need to update my page. Uh-oh. Oh, you actually have a page? Yeah. I wonder if I have a page. What's that? I found out that Veen... I do have a Wikipedia wiki fur page. I don't live in rural Illinois anymore. You can actually... You can edit that if you want. I'm going to. I'm going to update it and put an updated picture of the suit. Because when I put my up, updated information <laughs> last year, they say, who is this credited by? Myself! And they're like, oh, okay. So and they just said that. Here's the funny part. I tried Googling your name. Yeah. And all I got was Jusky. Damn it, Jusky! Get the hell out of here! <laughs> I got you. Really? Yeah. I tight er stupid blue hoosk. <laughs> oh, I should probably update uh Let's see. Let's see what happens if I just type dust in. Oh that. wait, put a space between it, but um Oh yeah, I that's like, my recent yeah, tweet. I got your your sunbird your not sunbird. Uh that's what I drew. Uh, why don't you scroll down and see if there's a wiki for why are bisexuals trending? What the fuck did I say? <laughs> the, the fursuit database. What is this? Oh there's yeah, a, wait, there's what? one of me. And what's funny is city new. <laughs> okay, so I did add this, but I didn't put anything on it though. Yeah, the fursuit database is an old time. I should probably update my fur affinity. Yeah, I should probably do, too. I think the last time I ever saw you on FA is when you followed me. Yeah. And that was 2017, and I haven't really used it all that much. Oh, well. Why don't you scroll down and see if there's a... I got videos. Curtin, Lofi Peep, Puss on Twitter. It's First Suit Friday somewhere, right? I don't care. I have no sense of time anyway. Who did that? You did. That sounds oh. like you. This is 20, 2017. This is from Twitter. Oh my cool. god, that's IFC! That's Briggs! That's Briggs? That's Briggs from 2017. Oh my god! Changed so much. He doesn't have a beard! It's so weird! I should tell him he should be Tsar Nicholas II. He's lost like 20 pounds since then. Yeah, he actually did lose some good weight though. Yeah, I wish I could be that 
twink status again. I don't even remember posting this. Spidey puss. I don't remember posting that. Your phone is doing things. That's six months ago. Did I have a Spidey suit six months ago? You may have. Um, what the because hell? my... What, uh, what month are we in right now? We are in December. The last That month. was June. Did I have it in June? That that would be six months. Seriously, yeah. June? Yeah, I think you probably had it back then. When did I get Spidey? Probably back then. I do recall you actually showing us that the one time I was over here. Did I, yep. I had it that long already? Yep. Yeah. Holy shit. No, I cannot find you on uh Wiki Fur. I have you on Weasel. I helped you. That's put right, up a Weasel when I Wiki thought Fur. really let's see here. FirstSquaredSkin.com. I made these icons. I've actually gone back and fixed them since then. Oh, you use the new uh, FA. Yeah, guys, we're looking at FA now. We've been going on for two hours, and this is what we're doing for content-wise. Looking at other people's Here FA because we're bored. <laughs> really? <laughs> you made this, or did somebody else do well, this? Well, I made it, because that's the only way you'll find this in for... Well, information is me. The funny part was is that I found an, another local's... Uh, this article needs to be wikified. What does it mean? According to their thingy, so it's not an official... Oh, no, they it's not official, it. but it's official by me. It's an unofficial official page. Damn it, and I told them it was me. You gotta upload a photo or something, I don't know. Oh, wait, I want to know... We'll look into that. I want to know if... should make, like, some dick... Dictatorial photo of myself in a dictatorial. By the way, we're going on two hours. Should we end this? You can go up to twelve on YouTube. Twelve hours? Yes. Okay, let's go we're twelve not hours. Doing this for 12 the only the only reason I know that is because another podcast that I listen to no. averages anywhere between five to twelve hours per episode. I have to fab. We need to compete. It's funny you call it that when you said that because that's actually the name of the podcast. Fap. It's called EFAP. Dude, we're being uh, our asses are being handed to us on on a platter. We need to go six hours, they, Kurt Ann. They have their own website I too. I can't go there. You way. must loaf most firmly that you've ever loafed before. No, that you November become. November has already ended. You will become brick loaf. I am not kidding. I've been listening. They're already like it. Even tells you how long it's it takes to episode. No, it takes for you to catch up on all their episodes. Oh, from start to beginning. Yeah. Wow. If we're talking time. That's impressive, actually. I actually got art with one of their hosts. It was uh, very, nice. very lewd. They simplified my description. However, what they have above me is a website. I can't do websites. Their so. fans created this. Holy shit, I don't have fans. Their, their fans <laughs> not only created the website, but they created a whole plethora of memes. They have memes, meme videos, and like meme artwork. Uh, the dawn is like probably the go-to meme. Oh, I, I really want to find some good ones here. Hey, so how are we feeling about this uh, podcast? It's I definitely like over two hours I long. I feel you like think we're ending because gonna... we're not really doing anything. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's. I think I'd be good. I'm kind of getting hungry. Yeah, I, feel I like, may as well. I feel like people order. are bored of us by now. I don't think anyone listens to this at all. Well, people listen to it. Except me. for some people. Ben. ben Holy listen. Christ, there's a lot of titties on those things. This is actually uh, a furry artist that made this. There is a ton of tits on that dog. What are you talking about dog? They're dogs. Grab them by the tits. They're like weird grapes. Why? Me too, please. Aw. Says, says, says a walrus with four tits. <laughs> that, that's the last Jedi that's reference. the latest made for you heads. That is cute. That is fantastic. Shit. If I, I didn't want... have the money, I'd want. Yes. Those are adorable. Those are freaking adorable. All right. Suppose we should probably get off. Yeah. Probably a good food. time. I had... Two, no, three glasses of UV blue, and you know what? I've got a slight buzz. It's not bad. I'm not talking about the Africa core by any chance, so you know what? That's pretty good. Uh, no. 
What is that, Medea? Medea. Well, I say this might be a good chance to probably sign off for the night. I think so. so. Oh my god. Oh. Guess what? We got through this whole thing without mentioning... Shit. And what? toilet humor. Well, except just now. Well, does that really count at this point? I don't know. I don't think it does. Anyway... This has been another episode of the Zooming Who's podcast, and once again, I'm your host, Dustin Husky. I'm Kurt Ansarpas. I'm your nobody guest, Wuff. Thanks for tuning in again this week. Glad to have you with us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Bye.